As Irma gains strength, a Metro Detroit family is stuck right in the Category 5 storm's path. My focus right now is my wife and my daughters that are here with me. Why they could not get off the Virgin Islands in time. But well, we begin with breaking news of a senseless tragedy in southwest Detroit that's left two people dead. Thanks for being with us for the news at 11. Several shots fired into a home in southwest Detroit tonight, killing two people, including a pregnant mother. Right now, police have not identified who believed the kill they believe the killer is. But Jason Colthorpe is at the scene tonight with word that they have made two arrests, Jason. They have, Devin. In fact, the scene doesn't look like much now. The police just cleared this about 15 minutes ago, and two people were taken into custody here tonight. But police don't believe either one of them were the person that pulled the trigger. One of them was picked up on illegal weapons violations, and another one became belligerent when police were trying to question him at this home here behind me. And police say the man who was the killer here walked up with a long gun, fired shots into this house, killing that pregnant mother of two. Detroit police officers arrived at this home on Deacon to find two people shot and killed inside. They say the shooter fired from outside the home. Everybody loved her. One of the victims is 29 year old Sophia Wilson. She had two children and was four months pregnant with her third. She was the best mom. <clears throat> I just saw her earlier this morning as I uh, went and met her at the school and I took all my grandbabies <clears throat> to school and after that we went to the store shopping for the last time. Police took two people into custody tonight including Sophia Wilson's boyfriend who wasn't home when the shooting happened. Her parents had been trying to get her away from this neighborhood and back home. But she was such a loving and caring person. I never thought. <laughs> My baby girl. Police working a few theories on the motive here, but will only say the house was definitely targeted, but maybe not the victims. I go to these almost every day and it doesn't sit well. Uh, all my years out here have not seen anyone uh, die for anything really that I thought was worthy. You hear it every day. I listen to you all every day. I never thought that it would, it would be, be our job. Every day, every day is right. Um, Sophia Wilson, by the way, was about a week away from be turning 30. She was also just about to find out if she was going to have a boy or a girl. As for the two kids she did have, nine-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son, her parents tell us they'll be caring from, for them from now on in Southwest. Jason Colder, Local 4. All right, Jason, obviously a lot more to come as we learn more about these arrests. Now, uh, as Hurricane Irma is upgraded to a Category 5 storm, residents of Florida and the Caribbean busy preparing. They are filling sandbags, making trips to the grocery store, filling up on gas, all to stock up for a storm that's expected to dump up to 10 inches of rain, which doesn't sound like anything after what we saw earlier, but it's the wind this time around. You're absolutely right, Ben. We've seen some striking images of Irma's size, and this hurricane is only getting worse. It is. You know, it's at the top of the Sanford Simpson scale to category five, but now with 185 mile an hour winds, this storm is the second strongest ever in the Atlantic. The good news is the winds will weaken. The bad news is not enough. 185 mile an hour winds. It is a category five storm. It is just hours away from possibly uh, just barreling right through Anguilla heading towards the Turks and Caicos. This will be a Thursday evening and that's likely going to be some slightly lower wind speeds. There are still some islands, some Bahama Islands that are just north of Cuba that could be impacted by the storm. But for the US Sunday at 8 p.m. The National Hurricane Center still has that hitting the Florida Keys, at least the center of the cone. Interesting to note when you look at the individual computer models. They've kind of come a little bit further to the east. All still have that northward turn, but the American model is well out here to the Bahamas. The consensus model, which is the average of all of them, is actually offshore, not even making landfall with Florida. So we'll really have to watch and see what happens over the next few days. Guys. Nice. Okay, Ben, while many are trying to leave Florida before Sunday, many in the Caribbean have no choice but to hunker down and cross their fingers. Yeah, Jermont Terry has been speaking with a family from Metro Detroit, and they are stuck in the Virgin Islands, Jermont. They are, Devin. This Category 5 hurricane is massive, moving right over the Virgin Islands, and that pastor from Pontiac and his family are stuck right here on, at, in, on, in Christianston in the Virgin Islands. Now, I should say they are bracing for whatever the storm will bring. Well, back here in Michigan, his parents are just praying that Irma spare their loved ones. 
Uh, a little bit of rain, a little bit of wind. Pastor John Smith Jr. sends video updates. We are awaiting Hurricane Irma. The Metro Detroit native documents the calm before the storm from St. Croix, Virgin Islands. We're just trying to figure this thing out, Dr. Mott, because we've never experienced a hurricane or, for that matter, a tropical storm. Smith moved his wife and two daughters from Pontiac to the island two years ago. He says God called him to open a church there. Now Smith and his entire family are trapped. Even the hardware store is boarded up. Being from Michigan, he knows what Mother Nature can bring, but waiting for the highest category hurricane to come? It's the unknown. That's what, that's what my anxiety and my issues are with the unknown. I just don't know what 150 and 175 mile per hour winds are like, and I guess uh, sometime soon we're going to find out. I, you know, I've stopped looking at the picture because it's, it's really scary looking at the pictures, you know. His parents in Southfield are concerned. I don't feel helpless because I have God mm -hmm. on our side. He's nervous. You can hear it in his voice. Mostly for his family. Smith tried getting them out. But we just couldn't afford it. Tickets just for one way were more than $1,000. Just for one ticket. As those on the island brace for the worst, Smith and his family can only pray for the best. We're putting batteries and flashlights, preparing uh, ourselves to go into the bathroom and, and into the tub. Now, Smith's parents sent a hurricane kit that arrived just in time today with those flashlights and other essentials. The hardest part for this family here in Michigan will be waiting after Irma hits for that phone service and Internet to get restored. They realize it will take days to communicate post Irma. Back to you. That's exactly right. All right, Jermont. Uh, there is more strong reaction tonight to President Trump's decision to rescind the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, program implemented by President Obama. U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions made the announcement today saying no new applications will be accepted, and that starts immediately. However, DACA recipients that already have a permit will be allowed to stay for now. Congress now has six months to come up with another plan to save the program. Supporters of DACA immediately started protesting across the country with many sharing stories of how they got to be in the U.S. in the first place. I didn't know I was illegal. All I knew it was I was here with my mom and that's all I care about. Our parents made a mistake when they brought us here but there's no future in Mexico. Tonight, former President Bill Clinton released a statement saying, and this is the quote, DACA has brought hundreds of thousands of young people out of the shadows, allowing them to live without fear, go to school, work, and contribute to America in countless other ways. Today's decision by the White House to terminate DACA, and that is effectively what it attempts to do, will crush their dreams and weaken the American dream for the rest of us. A last minute legal challenge leaves the future of the Royal Inn Motel up in the air. The motel owner filed a temporary restraining order, but the township filed a counter motion. The two sides will go to court tomorrow over the matter. The building was deemed unfit for living after it received 33 building violations and 17 fire violations. Meanwhile, the tenants are for forced to move out, taking all of their belongings. There's no word on what's next for the business. A major U.S. airport making a policy change to allow something that has been off limits since 9-11 and flight attendants are not happy about it. We'll have that coming up. Plus, this is no corner store holdup here. A security camera rolls as men with guns storm into a major retail store. We'll show you what happened next. And the uphill battle for a recovering drug addict. But they're always like, well, what's wrong with this person? Why can't you get it together? They don't understand it, that it is a disease. Next at 11, the stigma and the stereotypes faced by people crying out for help with their lives on the line. We can change the world. I'm a believer that anything is possible. I've got a vision and I'm gonna make it true. Wake up to something special. This week is all about making your hectic life easier. It's Convenience Box Week. From food to clothes, makeup and medicine. Find out if these convenience boxes really help and what to watch out for tomorrow. I'll show you who can benefit most from mail-order drugs and the red flags you need to watch out for. Remember, Detroit mornings start here. The word addict conjures up a lot of negative images. We tend to immediately picture what we've seen in movies or on television, almost always an oversimplification of the truth. And as we prepare to bring you a full day of coverage tomorrow on America's opioid crisis, we want to explore the stigma that makes the mountain of recovery an even steeper climb for those who so badly want to get clean. Here's our Steve Garagiola. You want an easy explanation of drug addiction? Drug addicts are just bad people, right? Well, we love labels, we love simple answers. 
If only the epidemic in America was that simple. Just how bad is America's drug problem? Is epidemic an overstatement? For Macomb County very District very Court very Judge Linda Davis. I think it's a massive epidemic. I think it's the worst epidemic this country has ever seen. And by most accounts, an epidemic of prescription drug abuse, heroin and opioids that is getting worse. In Macomb County, our death toll doubled last year. And my prediction is that's going to happen for at least the next four years. The first challenge is to put down the criminal stereotypes of drug addiction. The real faces belong to our sons and daughters, moms and dads. I was getting drunk and passing out and taking pills and going places where I wasn't supposed to be. As long as I had a fifth and a couple packs of cigarettes, nothing mattered. That's what it can do, you know, it can, it can just take complete, completely take over you. I could stay up and cry every day for the rest of my life. But Vicki King I, lost her son to an overdose of heroin laced with fentanyl. Just good people that just sports figures um, get hooked because of injuries and it's just everywhere. It's, there's no, it can be anybody. Judge Davis says we need to see drug addiction from a new perspective, a disease that requires treatment, not jail time. I was a prosecutor for many years and I put a lot of drug addicts in, in prison. So for me, this was a major, one. we talk about addicts changing, this was a 180 for me too. People out there in the world, they don't understand. They're always like, well, what's wrong with this person? Why can't you get it together? They don't understand it, that it is a disease. And recovery from that disease is a long, hard road. Recovery is like marriage. You know, so it's, it's, in fact, it's a bigger commitment than marriage. You know, you don't have the option to walk away and still live. Thanks, Steve. His story starts an important conversation about the opioid crisis in this country. That's why Local 4 is dedicating Wednesday to this epidemic with special reports in every newscast. At 6 a.m., the Frazier Director of Public Safety reveals how his department teaches parents and teachers to spot an addiction problem. On Local 4 News at 4, our phone bank and web chat will be open with addiction experts ready to answer your questions. And is Hope Not Handcuffs working? The program offers addicts a way out, no questions asked. Fentanyl is 50 times more potent than heroin. At 5 p.m., hear why the local head of the DEA says he's never seen anything worse in his career. Then at 5.30, the victims of this opioid crisis who cannot help themselves, how babies and children are suffering. Then at 6 p.m., our Dr. Frank Me George looks at treating addiction and why the answer to getting clean is different for everyone. And that leads us to our primetime special at 10 p.m. I don't want to see anybody else have somebody like this just die for no reason. Patients wanted the relief and they wanted the quick fix and doctors wanted to help patients. 30 right seconds there. they can right get there. over right away yeah. and so can opioids. Yep. I've seen more kids die from this. That was my mission, put as many drugs into my body as possible so I didn't wake up the next morning. So do you think this opiate you. epidemic has changed your practice? Absolutely. Our team of reporters goes in depth on this crisis, Opioid Nation, an American epidemic, tomorrow at 10. All right, Ben's turn now. We've uh, obviously spent a lot of time looking at what's going on elsewhere, but here, interesting that uh, on the first day of school for a lot of kids, it feels yeah. like fall. All Cooler of a temperatures I, I for sure, yeah. yeah. All that stuff you bought, you get to wear. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's uh, true. But uh, yeah, it not only did it get your attention this morning, but we're gonna be a little bit cooler uh, when we wake up tomorrow morning uh, compared to just uh, 24 hours ago. 57 is where we sit right now at Metro. All of us in the 50s. You can see the lower temperatures up here. Lapeer and Port Huron both at 52. And if you make the comparison between yesterday at this time, for a lot of us, about five, six degrees cooler. You start getting down here in our south zone, the drastic change of double digits cooler. And yes, just about everybody is going to end up in the 40s for overnight lows tonight. We've seen it into the rain. That has moved off to the east. Skies have cleared out a little bit, which is really not helping the cause. Uh, allowing some of those temperatures to drop even further. I don't think we'll see any more showers until tomorrow afternoon. But of course, we're keeping an eye on Irma, which as we told you at the top of the show is uh, just hours away from the Leeward Islands and uh, is likely going to continue barreling beyond that. By the way, behind that is Jose. That is also forecast to become a hurricane. The core, I should say the cone of that storm, the forecast track uh, takes it just sort of brushing the Leeward Islands. So hopefully Jose is going to make a turn to the north and not affect anyone. 
And oh, by the way, Tropical Depression 13 now being named uh, down in the Gulf. And you can see that uh, it's kind of disorganized. This is likely going to sit and spin here and not go any further north towards Texas, which is a sigh of relief for the folks in the Lone Star State. Back home, we're going to see showers again tomorrow afternoon. Again, just like today, scattered around. Not everybody's going to get those. Thursday, we'll see a few more. And May, Thursday night, get a little reinforcing shot. Something a little more organized pushes it through uh, in the overnight hours going into Friday morning, but beyond that we're dry and we're going to stay dry for a while. Temperatures tonight 50 degrees for the overnight low and that's in Detroit. Again, most of us are going to be in the 40s, partly cloudy skies otherwise and a light wind. Here are your high temperatures tomorrow. Not going to see 70 uh, and not even close to average for this time of year. 67 in Detroit. West Bloomfield, you'll be at 65. This is about 10 degrees below normal for this time of year. Tecumseh, you'll be at 66. Luna Pier Monroe at 67 degrees. West zone temperatures tomorrow just slightly cooler here, generally mid 60s, and could be as low as 63 up here in Sandalette County by tomorrow morning. Marlette, Sandusky, Lexington all hitting that number. 66 will be our warm spot in the north zone for St. Clair as we start out our Wednesday. Temperatures will be at their coolest on Thursday when we go to 64, and the 70s finally come back over the weekend in name only on Saturday and get a little bit warmer there on Sunday, but a lot of sunshine once we head into the second half of that forecast. Just kind of cool and unsettled. It is pretty cool from where we've been. Yeah. Not ready for that yet? No. All right, Ben. Younger air travelers probably don't remember this, but back in the old days, there was a time when your entire family could go inside the airport terminal and see you off. You see it in old movies all the time. We're so <laughs> sweet. We'll find out where that is happening again and who's not happy about it. Also terrifying moments for shoppers and store employees inside a Target store as men with guns come running through the front doors. She's making her. A man is in custody after being accused of killing his aunt and uncle. 37 year old Joseph Boroviak faces two murder charges. Police say he had a hit list with the names of other family members. They're working to determine a motive. Police in Ann Arbor investigating after a rock on the University of Michigan's campus was found to have a racist message painted on it. Incoming Latino freshman painted the rock only to find it painted over hours later with hateful messages. Plymouth police are working to identify a man they say stole a purse from a Tim Hortons. Surveillance shows the man enter the back door and come out with an employee's purse. If you know anything, call police. A terrifying moment for shoppers at a Target store in California. Caught on security camera, of course. You see three men run into the store on Saturday. One stays at the entrance and appears to pull out a weapon. The men force the occupants on the floor before reading a cash register. Police say one man had a rifle, the other had a handgun, but thankfully no one was hurt in the robbery. A new pilot program rolling out at Pittsburgh International Airport will allow people without boarding passes to access the airside terminal. This is the first time this has happened since 9-11. They can meet loved ones at the gate, shop, and enjoy the restaurants. The non-passengers will have to check in at a kiosk and get a My Pit Pass and then go through security. Now, while some people are excited for the program, many flight attendants are totally against it. In a statement released today, it says allowing the non-flying public to go through security at the Pittsburgh International Airport for the sole purpose of shopping is a terrible precedent and an ill-conceived decision. Interesting to watch to, to see, see how that works yeah, out. Works we all out. get to do that again. Yeah. Uh, today, Tigers player Michael Fulmer and outdoor apparel store Carhartt teamed up to give some veterans a very special game experience. All right. Sorry, not too long ago. Yeah, 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 I remember. Good to see you. How you doing? How's it going? This was great. The group of veterans got to meet Fulmer before the game against Kansas City. The vets were able to go on the field where they watched the teams warm up. They also met Fulmer, took pictures, and got autographs from the pitcher. Uh, Fulmer is part of Carhartt's Strikeouts for Vets, which donates $100 each time Fulmer and other players strike out.